Mutual Broadcasting System presents the first of a series of new and unusual dramatic programs written and directed by Willis Cooper and featuring Ernest Chappell. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Something like 5,800 feet above sea level. A little house, maybe 20 feet long, 15 feet wide. It's made of corrugated iron sheets with a high peaked roof. It sort of hangs over the edge of the mountaintop, with nothing but the spikes of pine trees stretching all the way down to Pasadena, better than a mile below you. Do you ever get out to California? Well, if you do, go up there sometime and take a look at that little house. But look at it through the fence that surrounds it. That's far enough. Through the fence. You go off Foothill Boulevard toward Pasadena, but you turn off on Angeles Crest Highway at La Canada. Just keep on driving up here. When you get there, just keep right on going. The top of Mount Wilson is the end of the highway. You ever look through a big telescope? At the sky, at night, at the things up there. Things so far away, you sprain your brain just trying to imagine how far away they are. With nothing between you and them. Billions and billions of miles of nothing. I don't know what it does to you, but brother, I freeze. Listen, do you know there are holes in the sky? No, I mean it. I've seen them. There's a thing in the constellation Andromeda. Uh, No, no, wait a minute. I'm not going to get technical with you. Just listen. There's this thing, astronomers call it the Horsehead Nebula. You know what it is? It's a hole. It's a great big patch of nothing. Just nothing. There aren't any stars there. There's just a hole. No, nobody knows anything about it. Astronomers look at it, they take pictures of it, and there it stays. There it is now, and tomorrow, and the next day, and a million years from now, and it's been there always. Yes, it has. It's so far away that what you see now is the way it looked a billion years ago, before there was anybody to see it from. And there's lots more of those places. So what's all this got to do with a little house up on top of Mount Wilson? I'll tell you. This was quite some time ago. I'd been living in California State for several years. I had a couple of bucks. Had a nice little place near Van Nuys. That was before the valley got to be so popular with movie people, radio comics, people like that. And it wasn't bad living alone... Waking up in the middle of the night hearing the Southern Pacific lark whistle for a crossing out around Chatsworth. Listening to a dog howling way out across the valley. Going back to sleep. I don't get back to sleep so easy these days. Well, these people from Cleveland were out there. Aldo Minucci and Hugh Grant. We used to be great friends, Aldo and Hugh and I. So nothing would do but they'd come to stay with me. Well, it was all right. I had a Dodge convertible. The boys got quite a kick out of California. That's how we came to go up to Mount Wilson that day. Aldo and Hugh had been, uh, you know, uh, looking around for odd places. They had some ideas. So one day we were having breakfast, and they were looking at an automobile club bulletin. Aldo said, let's go to Mount Wilson. So we did. So we did. I've been up there once before. You know how it is in California. I knew everything. I thought I knew everything. I found out different. We were inside the big dome where the 100-inch telescope is. It's like being inside a giant's watch. The telescope is in the middle, a big spidery framework with ladders climbing all over it up under this dome. The tourists stand on the kind of a catwalk around the edge while the astronomer explains as much as he thinks the apple knuckles will understand. 
There was just a few of us that day, standing close to a little kind of pulpit, listening with our mouths open. Yeah, it is like a pulpit. I got to thinking that day how the astronomer looked like a priest up there. A nice old, white-haired fellow, like a priest. And I was thinking he was talking about the heavens, too. I'd seen it all before, but my mouth was as wide open as you and now does. Moving through space, too. It moves around the sun at the rate of about 18 and a half miles per second. So, therefore, you see, we must, in order to keep this telescope focused accurately on the celestial objects we are observing, neutralize those motors mechanically. The telescope itself, as you will observe, is controllable in any direction by this motor. Watch it at the Notice the motion of the telescope. And the final movement, the rotation of the entire dome, exactly synchronized with the speed of the Earth through space. Watch through the shutters above the space. Look at it. Look at Ross. Yeah, I see. Look outside. We, we ain't moving. The sky's gone by. Look at you. I see it. It's an optical illusion, Aldo. No, it's not an optical illusion. In relation to space, this spot we are on is standing still. Through these motions here in the dome, the mirror of the telescope is kept aimed exactly at one spot far out in space. What's space, mister? It's... Nothing. What about the air? There are a few miles of air, my friend, and then... Nothing. Oh, well, stars. Yes, stars. Yes. And the places where... there are no stars. My skin twitched a little when he said that. The places where there are no stars. Did yours... Well, the show was over. We went outside into the sunlight. We walked across the long wooden bridge. There's a deep gully in front of the dome. And down a little path past the thing they call a coelostat. A small dome on legs about 100 feet high. Then they study the sun and sunspots and things like that with. That was quiet up there along toward the middle of the afternoon. There was a chill in the air. We were just talking. It's an odd place, and you get kind of impressed. The people impress you. The astronomers. They live up there all by themselves. They look at the sky. They see things. You always get the feeling they know a lot more than they're telling. Like uh, doctors. Like priests, I guess. Oh, I said that, didn't I? Well, that's what they like. The path leads through the woods. Biggest live oaks you ever saw. Lead through the woods over to the old hotel. So I said, hey, how about a beer before we start down, huh? A beer. That's for me. Can't get hard liquor up here, Ross. No, I don't think so. Anyway, I wouldn't want to drink, not with all that mountain road ahead of me. No, sir. Don't take no drink, Ross. I don't want to ride that road with nobody's had a drink of liquor. Maybe you shouldn't have a beer, even. Oh, no, wait a minute. Beer won't hurt me. Hey, what's this fence for? Huh? Well, I never noticed that before. Well, that's quite a fence. I have a hard time getting over that. What would you want to get over it for? I don't know. What do you suppose is on the other side where they got this heavy fence? I don't see anything. Except that little house out there on stilts. Yeah, funny little place. The fence goes right around it. Ain't there a gate? No, oh, come on, let's get a beer. No, I want to look at this, Ross. Probably they got something valuable in there. Sure, a scientific instrument or something. This place is all full of that stuff. Hey, look. A sign. Huh? Where? Here. Oh, come on. Oh, wait. What's it say? The public is forbidden to pass beyond this fence under severe penalty. At all? Yeah. What would you suppose they got in that place? I don't know. I don't care. Hey, there's a door up at the end of that trestle. Maybe we could get back and get in through that other shed where the trestle starts, huh? What do you want to go in there for? Oh, come on. we got to get going. No, I'm just curious. You know what I mean. The place might come in handy. Oh, yeah. See? Especially if they keep everybody out like this. 
Well, the thing must be full of stuff you like. Ross said, scientific stuff. Yeah, it might be. Might not be. Hey, here comes that fellow that made the spiel up there. Well, ask him. He'd know. Well, he won't tell you. Well, we'll find out. Hey, fella. How are you? Hey. Were you talking to me? Yeah. What's in that funny-looking building? Over there? Nothing. Yeah? What's the idea of the fence, then? You don't want people to go in there. Oh, I'd sure like to see what's in it. I said there's nothing in there. Are you sure, mister? Yes, I'm absolutely sure. Uh, could we get a pass to go in there, maybe? No. You saw the sign, didn't you? Yeah, it said something about the penalty of the law. You didn't read it very carefully. He didn't read it. I did. He did, I guess. Wait. The public forbidden to pass beyond this fence under severe penalty. Pete? I see what he means. He didn't say anything about the law. Ah, uh, that's right. Well, then, there are other penalties. Ah. Tough guy, huh? No. Not at all. Well, what does it mean, then? I'll give you a little friendly advice. I wouldn't try to find out if I were you. Oh, is that so? Yes. Do you really know what's in there, mister? Yes. What? Nothing. Okay, lads. Let's go get that beer. Well, and of course, you know what was up your way ahead of me. My Cleveland pals weren't in California just for a vacation. There was a bank I'd had my eye on for a while out in Pacific Palisade. It wasn't the first bank that Manucci and Hugh Grant and I had worked a deal on. I didn't go much for this place up on Mount Wilson with nothing in it and a fence around it. Aldo and Hugh, well, after all, could you find a better place to stash away some dough? Nobody could get in, they said. And if we could... Well, so I bought the idea finally. And to make a long story short, we took, I think it was $53,000 out of the bank. Fifty-three, fifty-four. dollars Now, what's the difference? It's all gone now. It's a long drive from Pacific Palisades over Sunset Boulevard, then up Beverly Glen to the valley, through the nice to Sunland, down past the sanitarium on Foothill Boulevard to where you turn off on the Angeles Crest Highway. The long drive, especially at one o'clock in the morning. That was when we pulled out of Pacific Palisade. It was summer. If uh, after you turn on the mountain road, you're not allowed to smoke. You see, a fire warden might come along, and those guys can tell somebody smoking in the car a half mile off. They throw you in a can for it, forest fires. Well, we didn't want anybody stopping us. It was risky enough anyway, because practically nobody ever drives up there late at night. Well, early in the morning, I mean. Well, we didn't meet anybody. All three of us were jittery with no cigarettes. That road. Stepping up in daylight. Oh, in the dark. It was half past four when we got to the top. The hotel was dark. Cabins were dark. Just like Southwood stars. Why ain't you pretty near reach up and touch it? I remember the old guy in the hundred inch dome. Nothing between us and the stars. And down below, and if you've ever been up there at night, you know what I mean. Just like looking down at stars. The lights are 17, 18, 19 pounds. Pasadena, Los Angeles, Hollywood, Van Nuys. San Fernando, Culver City, Santa Monica. It makes my hair stand on end when I think of it. And I haven't seen it for... Well, never mind how many years. Well, we stumbled through the pitch dark. We got off the path three times, nearly fell down here. And brother, that would be a fall. We still couldn't whisk a cigarette. It was dark. Hugh Grant was in front, then me, then Aldo. We each had briefcases. Hugh had a pair of those big spring wire cutters that would go through a steel cable. All of a sudden, he bumped into the fence. Ouch. What's the matter? The fence. Hey, where are you? Stand still, will you? It's dark. Shut up. 
Listen for a minute. Hear anything? No. No? See anything? No? Look. What? The dome over there. You see somebody? No. <laughs> Them two big windows up there. But that big round dome looks like somebody watching us. <laughs> sure does. Oh, no, cut it out. I'm going to try the fence with the cutters. Want the flashlight? Jump. No. I wish we would. Yeah, forget it. I just don't like that place. I get out of the way. Won't you help you? Just keep out of the way. Wait. Hear anything? Well, that wire made enough noise to... All right, all right. I'll try another strand. Now see if you can slide under there, one of you. Me. Okay. No, can't make it yet. I'll try another. I'll look out for your arm there. Now try. Uh, wait till I take off my coat. All right, now, let's see. Well, how about it? He's through. All right, go ahead. Me? You. All right. Cut another strand, you. Now make it now. I guess so. Yeah. Where are you, Aldo? Right here. Come on, Joe. Hey, slide the briefcase and through first. Coming up. Got him? Got him. Here I come. All set? All set. I'm all set. I'm as all set as I ever will be, I figure. I don't like any part of this place. I don't like the dark. I don't like the stars up above us. I don't like the lights down below. I don't like the silence. I don't like climbing around the top of a mountain with nothing under me but thin air for a mile or more. All I can hear is Hugh and Aldo in front of me, cracking through the weeds, cursing when one of them whacks a shin against a sharp rock. And all I can see is two black shapes in front of me. A blacker shape, that's the building, a little house with nothing in it. Aldo and Hugh are panting. Come on, Aldo. 6,800 feet, you know. Your breath is pretty short. It's tough going, especially when you're dragging a briefcase full of money, too. You're scared and sweating and tired. And then all of a sudden... We're under the building, alongside one of the struts that hold up the little trestle. Loose me up, Aldo. Aldo boosts him up. He was a little guy. He's spry. A lot spryer than I am up there a mile in the air, and I guess he's not as scared as I am. So I look up, and he's sprawling on the trestle with nine million stars behind him, reaching down to me. I had my hand, Russ. I scrambled up. I never know how I made it either. There we are in a second Aldo's up there with us. Now, keep quiet a minute and rest. As I'm knocked out. Yeah. You hear anything, you? Just the wind. Ross, I... Uh, no, I thought I heard something. Guess it's just the wind. Listen. It's the wind. Well... So we stood up. So Hugh walked the rest of the way down the little trestle. We followed him, stumbling over the planks, and there was the door. We rattled the bar on it. It was padlocked. So Hugh took the big cutters and he wrenched away at the bar. We shivered there in the cold, waiting to see if anybody heard us. There wasn't a sound. So Hugh tried again. And the bar fell off. It kept still for another minute. And then... Open the door. Hey, where's the flashlight? Wait. Ah, nobody can see us. Put your fingers over it and turn it up. Turn it in there. Okay. I don't see anything. Well, the guy said there was nothing in there. I can't see a thing. Open up the light a little more. I got it open. It's all black in there. There's something the matter with the light. Oh, there ain't. Look. Turn that light off me. Well, look now when I shine it inside. Nothing. Well, there's got to be something in there. Nothing, the man said. Can't even see the floor. Well, I'll find out if there's anything in there. No, don't go in. You can't tell what's liable to be. Well, I'll look out. I'll toss a briefcase in. No, no. Throw the wire cutters in. Well, where are they? 
Here. Now, the mate, look out, will you? Keep still. You'll wake up the dead. Well, nobody heard us, I guess. A shot with luck tonight, no kidding. Now, give me them cutters. Uh, here. Now, shine the light in there. Sure can't see anything, can you? Come in. Get out of the doorway. Keep the light in there. Go ahead. Put him against the far wall. All right. Look out. Where'd they go? Tossed them hard enough to bounce. Move the light around. I can't see a thing. I can't either. There ought to be. The light just kind of seems to... Oh, cut it out. There's probably some kind of stuff on the floor. Powdered. Maybe they fell into it. Here, stand to one side, Ross. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going in to look around. You got a gun, Aldo? Just this little cutty, too. All right, come on. Russ, you stay here and watch and listen. I wouldn't go in there, Hugh. Uh, nobody asked you to. I'm going. Come on, Aldo. Now listen, you. You've got the screaming memes, too. Now come on with that gun. There's nothing in there. Look, you. Come on, let's get out of here. Oh, shut up. Yeah. Might as well take the dough, too. We can stick it in there. Now go ahead, Aldo, with the light. You go first. All right. Now stand there and keep your ears... Hey, Hugh. Where are you? I can't see him. Listen, Aldo, don't go in there. Yeah, I got to. Hey, Hugh. Hugh. Where are you? Listen, Aldo. Keep your eyes and ears open now. We'll be right back. Hey, Hugh. You all right? I'm coming in, Hugh. Hugh. Aldo. What's in there? Hey, Hugh. Okay, Ross. Something's the matter with him. Here I come. Hugh. I'm going to... Hugh. Hey, Hugh. Aldo. Hey, what's in there, you two? Hugh. I can see you. You can stand up now. They won't come out, I assure you. Come on, son, stand up. I've got a gun. No, you have Stand up. When my friends come out... They're not coming out, my friend. Stand up. You wouldn't believe me when I told you. What's in there? What's in there, I said? I told you there's... Nothing behind that door. My friends went in there. They're not there now. There's nothing in there. You understand me? There's nothing in there. Listen. No, you listen. I... No, I suppose you do no good to tell you. Tell me what? I'd better show you. Show me what? Come with me. No. Come with me. I won't. You've got it. Wait. Wait for me. Across the little trestle, away from the door, he closed down my friends. Through another door into a long shed in the dark. And I was glad I couldn't see the stars. Out another door at the end of the shed. Down the path, past the sealer step, reaching up into the sky, shining in the starlight, looking like one of those visitors from Mars you heard about on the radio. Across the little wooden bridge with it. Two eyes of the hundred-inch dome staring down at me in a cold wind coming up the other side of the mountain. And up the ramp. Into the dome itself. And up the iron stairs. Follow me. A little yellow light at the head of the stairs and... Then out on the catwalk in the dark with the floor 40 feet below us. Up another ladder. My legs are getting tired. Up. Follow me. Up another dizzy ladder. And another. 
and across another spidery walk. Here, sit in this seat. I can't speak. My throat is dry. My legs are trembling. I'm icy cold in that great dome how far above the floor. I can't tell you. Sit still. You won't fall. What did... Sit what did... still, I said. You'll have to be sure. Wait. Magnetic destination. You can look now. Look? At what? Look through the telescope. No. Look, son. What do you see? Stars. Millions of stars. Wait. Look again. What do you see? Nothing. Nothing. What? Now? Stars again. Millions. No, a black cloud. Now? Nothing. That nothing you see is a million light years away. What is it? There's nothing there to see. My friend, there are scores of places in this universe where there's nothing. Far places, near places. Do you understand what I mean? Is, is that what you meant when you said... When I said there's nothing behind that door? Yes. Well, where... Where... Your friends, your misguided friends... I don't know. Perhaps... Take your eye from the telescope. Wait. Look now, if you dare. Well, what? Look. Yes. You guess what I saw. You guess what I saw clawing through black clouds of nothing. You guess what eyes I saw. I saw nothing. Yes, the little house is still there on Mount Wilson. You can go look at it if you want to. But don't go too close. Maybe somebody will tell you it's just a place where they store equipment. Maybe. Why do they keep the door locked then? Well, just one other thing. Don't you go around opening doors you don't know anything about. There might be nothing behind one of them. You have just heard Quiet, Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper. The man who talked to you is Ernest Chappell. And the man who played Aldo Minucci is Martin Lawrence. Pat O'Malley was Hugh Grant and James Van Dyke, the astronomer. The music was composed and played by Gene Parazzo. And now for a word about Quiet, Please, for next week, here is our writer-producer, Willis Cooper. Bill? I've written what I think is an exciting and unusual love story for next week, Chappie. We'll welcome as our guest the charming star of stage and radio, Claudia Morgan. Quiet, Please, for next week is entitled, I've Been Looking for You. Until next week, then, quietly yours, Ernest Chappell. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.